Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Tear Down Lab. It's likely that you have an old BBC Micro somewhere in your household, or at least in your family, and some of those will have come from schools or universities and be pretty bashed up. I actually have one, you can see right now, and it's suffering from a number of problems, but the main ones, of course, are the ashtray keyboard slot cover missing and a couple of holes. So I'm gonna work on something to tidy this up and you can follow along with me. Now, before I do that though, I just have a quick announcement to make just to stay tuned in some future episodes. Very thanks to Pink Mouse. He sent in this amazing ZX81 that is undocumented and probably in need of repair. So we're gonna have a look at that. And of course, I know some of you were very much into the Fami clone, and you can see I've actually been working on something here, and that's, yes, let's get it out, the silver, the shining silver multi-cart, but onwards to the BBC Micro. This poor Beeb clearly has had a hard life, but that doesn't mean we can't take care of it now. Markings on the case can be usually taken out of some solvent or cleaners and a little gentle abrasive like toothpaste, but you don't need to worry about that. There's plenty of videos on cleaning up cases and retro brighting. But the main concern is, of course, this slot and these holes. And I've taken the precaution now to save a bit of time of hot gluing a couple of chunks of acrylic to block the holes. But don't worry, that's not the final finish. This is just a temporary step. So I'm gonna take the lid off and uh, put the main body away nice and safe so we don't get any glues and resins onto it. Just before I put it away, I noticed that this security loop here on the back has actually fatigued the case and caused some cracks. I think it's better without that in case it gets hit in the future. So just before we chuck it into the cupboard, I'm gonna take some pliers and we're just going to remove that. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be stealing this off my desk. With that out, I'll just put some tape here for later. You'll see why. To fix these holes, I'm going to use my quick set epoxy resin. I always recommend it. I always use it. Now you can buy this in the pound shops and it doesn't cost you very much. Just make sure you squeeze out enough though because you don't really want to be mixing loads over and over again. So just do it all in one go and try to get the blobs relatively even and don't put the cap on backwards because you'll never get that off. There is a cheat at this point. If you actually happen to have some filler material that's the same color as the thing you're trying to fill, you can actually add it to the resin and then you won't have to finish this at the end. But I don't have that. I'm just going to Mix up neat vanilla resin. I'm going to administer it into the holes and I'm going to let it just drop in so we don't make too much mess. You want to make sure it's filled enough, possibly slightly proud, but not overly proud, because if you try to sand that down, you're going to sand the case and that's going to cause damage. So while we're waiting for the resin to dry, it would be the perfect time to see how we're going to fill in this ashtray. Fortunately, online, you can go to Thingiverse and find models for this. It's nicely dried now. It's at this point, it's a good idea to rough up the surface. So if you have something you can get in there, uh, I'm going to use one of these PCB cleaners. It's basically a little bit of steel wool on the end and I'm just going to poke it ever so gently into that hole and just give a little twisty motion, a little spiral motion. And we're quite fortunate because there is a little dip here. You can't quite see it in the camera but the hole is dished like that so our paint is going to sit on top nicely and we do have this one here at the edge of the keyboard so I'm just going to do the same on that. Just give it a bit of a keyway and we need to mix up some paints. So I'm using just standard acrylic paints that you get from any hobby shop and I couldn't find a small brush, I'm using a huge brush. So it's just basically stuff that you're gonna have lying around. And from previous experience, I like to use a little bit of this yellow, what's it, how would you pronounce that? Ochre, yellow ochre, och, 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 ray, yellow ochre, and a touch of lemon yellow to bring that down a little bit 
and normally a little bit of titanium white. So it's a combination of all those, and you can airbrush it, to be honest with you. Uh, I have painted some of a BBC case with this, and I hear Neil over at Retro Man Cave has actually airbrushed, uh, spray painted rather, rather than I think, with rattle cans, <laughs> a BBC micro, so you should be able to get a colour match. But if you sit there nicely just mixing your palette, paint your palette blue and grey, that's still looking a little bit orangey. I'll zoom out a bit so we've got the contrasting colours. You can see what we're doing. I'm hoping the black will be easier. We're just going to use a bit of lamp black. <laughs> black is black. It is good enough. And we'll just put a little bit more white in there. It's funny. I was mixing some acrylic paints for an Atari ST once and it turns out to be a grey. Who would have thunk it? It's not yellow, it's a grey. And you can still see it's almost there, just that little bit too orangey in the light. So another bit of titanium white. It's like Bob Ross, isn't it? Bob Ross paints PCs. Du, 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 du. Look at that little fella there. I need a squirrel mascot though. Or an acorn. Right, so let's say that's good enough. You know, it's a bit shiny, uh, but I think it might dry okay. Compared to a hole in your case, it's definitely better. So I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit more because the last thing I want is a streak of orange going through where I've ever so delicately tried to fill this hole with this huge brush. So I'm just gonna load up a corner of the brush and I'm gonna go doink. And I'm doinking it in the hole and I'm just moving it around. Look at that. Woohoo! Now you can see the hole's not quite filled, so it could do with another application, but <laughs> hurrah! That's pretty good. Now let's go for the uh, other side, which is the black. And I don't have another brush. Give this one a little wee wipe. Probably should give it a wash really but no we're just gonna wipe it because we're painting black. The ultimate in cover <laughs> the ultimate in coverage the old black. Should go to Poundland and get some more brushes though next. So we're gonna try the old lamp black here in the corner. Tiny bit we don't need to mix that with anything anything at all. Although maybe maybe cutting it a bit of raw umber get that blackness down a bit and we're just going to do the same massaging it around Ooh, I was a little bit careless there went over the edge ho oh, invisible it's invisible now now while that's drying let's play with some other things you noticed off in the 3d printer I had finished printing this and that is a cover. Now why are these covers useful? Obviously they're useful to keep fingers from poking in those holes but there are some ap other applications because as you know BBC micros have annoying tendency to be too loud or too quiet when you want to use them so you could drill a hole in those and fit a volume control um, but of course that's not the right colour so I would suggest you can take your paints and you could probably prime this up first uh, use some rattle can black, but look at that, look at that coverage. That was a tiny pea-sized cover uh, blob of paint, and the coverage is immense, isn't it? Look at that. And you just hit the edges, and you're good. You're good to go, and you can see that's going to match up pretty, pretty well when it dries. And just as way of demonstration, here is one I did make earlier with uh, rattle can paint. So you can rattle can paint this. I primed it in grey primer and then sprayed it with the black on top. And we might as well just go ahead and fit this because it won't disturb our paint drying on our blobs. And you can just pop that. <laughs> make sure you do it the right way around. There are catches on it, so it does need to be bent into place. There we go just like that and it's a little bit loose in this case it's still biting on but I, I like that tolerance it's up to you if you don't want the tolerance just put a bit of foam pad as you clip it in and it, and it will bite so there I think we can uh, reassemble our BBC micro and there we have it it might not be the most perfect of repairs and let's face it 
this particular BBC Micro does need an awful lot more cleanup. However, it proves the point. And if you've got one of these beauties at home, you can certainly make it look half decent. Get Beebin. You might not be aware of it, but all BBC Micros have a special mode. Just type in star deboot 486 and hit return.